is in the hands of God, Amen. it doesn't take God by surprise. Amen. Doesn't take, and God doesn't have to go to plan B because plan A for God always works. Amen. When Amen. God has a plan for you, irrespective of what man may do, God's plan must come true. Amen. And God says, I've got my thoughts for you, is to prosper you. And to give you an expected hand, I want to be in the hands of God. Amen. You know, it is good when you can get your salary at the end of the month. It is good, isn't it? Be honest with me. Yeah. It is good, right, boss? When, when you can know that you're going to collect your wages at the end of the month, it's another thing. It's another thing when you don't know where your salary is coming from, but you know he who says, I will supply all your need. According to his riches in glory. So folks says to me, you have been made redundant. How can you still preach? I didn't start preaching because somebody promised me wages at the end of the month. I didn't start preaching because I'm going to get a check or I'm going to get a secure amount in my bank book at the end of the month. I start preaching because God has called me to preach. Yes. So, God said, I know the plan I have for you. i got plans for you. So what we've got to do, sometimes we can't understand or comprehend the plan of God. Sometimes if it's left to us, we'd have changed things around, do it a bit differently. Am I right? Yes. We'd have done things a bit differently. But you know, God's way is always the best way. Would you say amen? Yes. God's way is always the best way. When we put our life into his hand, beloved, he bless us, but the best <laughs> is yet to come. The best is yet to come. I'm saying to you, beloved, I'm saying to you, we've got to make sure that our life is in the hand of God because this is the best insurance policy that we can have. Would you say amen? The best insurance policy that we can have. I've seen God work in some amazing way. I could keep you here all day just to let you know that God has been good to me. Amen. God has been good to my family. Understand me. My little daughter, she said, Daddy, Daddy, I don't understand. I've been asking you for a laptop when you were working and you couldn't afford it. You've lost your job and I got a laptop. God is good to us. Amen. He's good to us. She said, Dad, how could it be that you are helping other people with money and you're not working? I said, I know in whom I believe and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep me. God has been good to us. Amen. But yet, the best is yet to come. So if God has been so, so amazing to us and he says there is more to come, get excited about it. Get excited about it. Because if God said the best is yet to come, I've got to start taking off my jacket now. Because the better jacket is on its way. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. I've got to start looking to get rid of my car because a better car is on the way. Because God said, do not remember the farmer things because I'm going to open doors that has been closed for you. When you put your life in the hand of God, he can make a way when there seems to be. No way. Hallelujah, somebody. God can make a way. I'm saying, church, the best yeah. is yet to come. It's yet to come. And that's why we can sing one for one to God. Be the glory. Be the glory. Great things. He has done not because he has done it already, but we know he's going to do it again. We're going to say amen. He's going to do it again. I know the plans that I have for you, God. Said Jeremiah 29, verse 11, he was saying that. And so, beloved, hear what John said in John chapter, in Revelation now. Revelation 21, verse 4. I'm saying the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Revelation 21, verse 4. Revelation 21, verse 4. You gotta look at this passage now. You gotta look at this passage. This is amazing. Revelation 21 and verse 4. You gotta read this now. You're bound to say amen. amen. Revelation 21, verse 4. I love this passage. It said, And God shall do what? Wipe away how many tears? Every tears from our and there shall be no more, nor, nor. There shall be no more 
for the former things are passed away. We are surrounded by tears. Can you imagine no more tears? In other words, not just God is not just going to wipe away the tears from our eyes, but he's going to remove everything that causes us to cry. Would you say amen? amen. Everything that causes pain. We are surrounded with tears every day. Death fill the atmosphere of sorrow and call for our family, our friend, our country, the world all around us. We are comforted by many and we have to comfort many because we are touched by the problem. We are touched by their tears. But beloved, we can look beyond to better days. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. We can look to better days because the best is yet to come. I hear God says, no more of anything that caused pain for my children. In other words, those who are working in hospital, no more hospital. <laughs> no more mortuary. No more pharmacy. No more a day can take and backache. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. No more tummy ache. No more blood pressure problem. No more diabetes. No more arthritis. No more cancer. No more malaria. No more asthma. No more sickness and sadness. No more suffering. No more pain and poverty and calamity. No more depression. No more injection. No more temptation. No more long appointment. No more rubbing our joints with ointment. No more. Because God says no more. No more expensive apartment and no more economic crisis. No more exorbitant prices. No more making bad choices. No more overwork and underpaid. No more redundancy. No more bankruptcy. No more lying and shooting and looting. No more accident and no more ambulance. No more eyeglasses. No more. No more. Because God says, no more. No more, beloved. No more. When we see what we see and what we hear today is not what it will always be because the best is yet to come. I'm saying it could be good now, but the good is going to be changed to better. And the better is going to change. And the great is going to change to greatest. And the greatest is going to change to greater. And greatest and the best and the better. But I believe it's going to be the bestest. <laughs> best -est. Because God says the best is yet to come. So we've got to live in anticipation. Amen. We're going to live in anticipation. That's why John said in John chapter 14, 1 to 3. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in, in my Father's house. In my Father's house or what? I don't know about you if you live in mansion. But I certainly don't. But I know where my name is written on one. Amen. Amen. In my Father's house. Amen. Amen. Mansion, you better think of expense like rent, mm -hmm. like bill. You know, it pays a lot to heat mansions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you better think of all of that sort of thing. And Jesus paid it all. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus paid it all. No more beloved. No more rent and mortgages. No more for all of those things. Jesus paid it all for my mansion. Would somebody say amen? amen? Yes, he paid it all. He's coming soon and to give us and for us to experience the best that is yet to come. I'm saying God has something in store for us. Something in store for us, beloved, that we cannot imagine. I, I, I heard, I heard about Martha. You heard about Martha? I heard about Martha. Martha, she was one of the deaconess in church. She's always willing and active to assist in whatever capacity Martha can assist. She, everybody knows Martha. She's been in a, in a local, local congregation for over 40 years. So Martha is well known. She was always cheerful and optimistic, ready to help somebody, ready to assist in whatever way she can, always smiling and always greeting the visitors, welcoming them, taking them to their seat. And she just always saying, help, let me do this always willing to volunteer to assist in whatever capacity Martha could assist. Always calling her pastor, pastor, what can I do to help in the church? Always willing. And one day Martha called her pastor and she said, pastor, 
can you come over and see me? You see, this was strange because normally when Martha called pastor, it's to a sister ask where she can help. But this time she didn't say, what can I do? She said, can you come over and, and, and see me, Pastor? Pastor was a bit surprised at this call, but changed his appointment that day just to make sure that he sees Martha because this was different. This is not like Martha. And so Mark, Pastor went over to Martha, and so they sat down on the front porch, and they started talking about their children and grandchildren. But Pastor was still thinking, this is not what Martha called me over for. She, she, she called me over to tell me something. And then while he was thinking, Martha said, Pastor, I didn't just call you to talk about my grandchildren or ask you about yours. I, I called you to get because I got some bad news today. Pastor said, what's the news? She said, Pastor, I, I've been for my checkup, pull for the checkup, and the doctor gave me some bad news. What's the bad news? The doctor told me I have cancer. And I have only two months to live. That's why I call you over, Pastor. You see, I'd like you to help me to arrange my funeral. Yes, Pastor, I'd like you to help me to arrange my funeral. Pastor said, I, I'll do whatever I can do to assist you, Martha. She said, Pastor, I have already chosen my songs. As a matter of fact, the first song that I want to be sung at my funeral it is precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I want you to, to sing that at my, at my funeral, Pastor. And, and then I, I, there's another song that I want you to sing for me, and that is what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and, and, and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry. Pastor, I've also got my scripture reading. My scripture reading is very important. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and, and verse 16. It said, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. That's my text. And I want you to preach on that text for me, Pastor. Will you do that? Pastor said, I will do whatever you want me to do. Then she said, Pastor, come with me. And she took him in her wardrobe and she said, you see this blue dress? I've had this blue dress for many years now, and I want to be buried in this blue dress. Will you make sure that that happened? Pastor said, I can make sure. They said, Pastor, you see my old Bible? I've got this Bible for many years, Pastor. Many, many years I've got this Bible, and, and I want to be buried with it. I want it to be in my left arm, right in my heart. And if people ask you why, you just tell them that that Bible has encouraged me over the years. That Bible, it has been a source of strength and encouragement, and I don't want to let it go now. And she said, Pastor, I've got one more request for you. Pastor said, whatever it is, Martha. She said, Pastor, I want you to bury me with my fork in my right hand. Put my fork in my right hand, Pastor. He said, why? Why do you want to be buried with a fork? She said, Pastor, I've been a deaconess for over 40 years in church. And after fellowship lunch, we say, keep your fork, because the best <laughs> is yet to come. <laughs> it's not some homemade soft pie and cake that nobody wants to enjoy. It's some beautiful cake and pies that everybody wants to enjoy. He said, Pastor, I want to keep my fork, because dessert is on its way. The best is yet to come. So I, I want to keep my fork. So anybody ask you why I've got my fork in my, in my right hand, tell them that that martyr it, it is waiting for the best that is to come. Tell them what, what I'm saying to us, church, what I'm saying to us, my friends, what, I, what I'm saying to us right now, that you may be on top of your job and everything is going fine and you're finding fulfillment in your work and in your family and your health is good and your finance is settled. But I'm saying to you, the best is yet to come. Maybe you're going through discouragement today because your kids it is not in church and, and they're not here anymore as they used to be. And you feel like giving up and you're fed. But I'm saying keep holding on because the best 
It is yet to come. If your aunt it is going to rent in agony, maybe of divorce or, or your family broken up and, and you can't pick up the pieces, I'm saying look to Jesus because the best is yet to come if your body has been rocked with rheumatism and arthritis and any pain or, or sickness. I, I hear the great physician, the sympathizing Jesus saying the best. It is yet to come. If, if you come from a broken person or a dysfunctional family and you're still healing from the scars, I'm saying keep looking to Jesus because the best it is yet to come. If you're going through financial problem, I'm saying keep looking to God because the best it is yet to come. If you're struggling with guilt, keep holding on to Jesus because the best it is yet to come. If you're trying to keep your head above waters and you feel like you're going to drown, I hear Peter shout out, keep looking to Jesus because the best is yet to come. If you're struggling in your relationship with God and you feel like you're taking four steps forward and five backward, I'm saying keep all in order on your heart because the best is yet to come. If you find it difficult to cope with the loss of a loved one, and the word of God declares today the best is yet to come. If you've lost your joy and your praise has diminished, I hear the choir saying, keep praising because the best is yet to come. If you come to church today and you're wondering why you've come, keep coming. Because the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come, my brothers and sisters. And all of us want to enjoy and experience that best. But are we ready to enjoy the best? God can prepare us for what he's gone to prepare for us. Would you say amen? He said, I've gone to do what? Prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will do what? Come again, Come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You see, Jesus not only go to prepare a place for us, let me tell you this. He's not only gone to prepare a place for us, but he wants to prepare us for that place. Let me stand to all those who are saying, Lord, the place that you want to, you're going to prepare for me, I want to go there. Whether you're baptized or not, that's not a question. That's not a question. The question is, you're saying, you're saying, you want to be in the place that Jesus is going to prepare for you. Just raise your hand. Go. Just raise your hand. The Lord bless you. You can put your hands down. But I know that some have not yet allowed God to prepare them or start the preparation for that place. I know that some have not done that. Some have done that already, praise God. But some have not done that. Some have done that and they've fallen away. And they want to do it again because they don't want to miss out at what God has gone to prepare for them. And I want to give somebody an opportunity to do that. I want to pray for somebody. I want to pray with somebody. Somebody who is saying today, I've not yet allowed Jesus to prepare me. In other words, I'm not yet giving my life to him through baptism. And I want to be saved in Jesus. Come, I've not yet given my life to Jesus through baptism. But I want to be saved when Jesus comes. Is there one person here today? You want to raise your hand. You want to raise your hand to say today, I'm not yet being baptized, but I want to be saved when Jesus comes. Is there one person today? Is there one? The Lord bless you. Lord, bless, oh, the Lord bless you, the Lord bless you. Don't be afraid to raise your hand. You want to be saved when Jesus comes, but you've not yet been baptized. Just raise your hand, beloved. I'm going to pray for you today. The Lord bless you, the Lord bless you. Is there somebody else? Don't be afraid to raise, don't be afraid to raise your hand. It, it, beloved, listen to me now. It's not about who is looking. It's about being ready to meet Jesus when he comes. That's what it's about. So don't worry about who is looking and what people may say. I want to be saved when Jesus comes. Even if people laugh at me, I want to be saved. Amen. Amen. I want to be saved when Jesus comes. Even if people mock me, I want to be saved when Jesus comes. So that's what matters. Because there's a saying I heard my mom says, Who laughs last? Who laughs? You guys know my mom so well. <laughs> yes. Who laughs last? Laughs best. Some 
somebody wants to give their heart to Jesus and be prepared to meet him when he comes. Hallelujah, church. Amen. I'm going to ask somebody the church to do something for me now. Do it for those folks now. That those who have already given their heart to Jesus and been baptized and are settled in their faith, I want you to bow your heads with me. Bow your heads and pray for those who have not yet done that. Those who have already given their heart to Jesus, you've been baptized and you're settled in your faith, bow your heads where you are and pray for those who have not yet done Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Those, so you shouldn't be looking now. You shouldn't be looking and seeing who is raising their hand. You're praying now. You're praying now for those who have not yet given their heart to Jesus. Those who have not yet given their heart to Jesus, don't bow your heads now. It's not time for you to bow your heads now. It's time for you to look at the preacher. Look at the preacher now. The preacher is talking to you because somebody is praying for you now. Somebody is praying for you. The folks who have already given their heart to Jesus, they're praying for you. They're beside you and they're praying for you. They're praying that God bless you. They're praying that God strengthen you. They're praying that God take care of you. They're praying for you now. So people are praying for you right now. Those who have not yet given their heart to Jesus, the folks behind you, before you decided, they are lifting you up in prayer. They are putting you before the very throne room of God. And they are asking God to bless you. And we serve a God who hears and answers prayer. Those who have not yet given their heart to Jesus. Look at the preacher now. Look at the preacher. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now. Look at the preacher. Today, you want to make a stand for God. You want to be prepared to meet Jesus when he comes. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. You want to be saved when Jesus comes. If you're not giving your heart to Jesus, stand to your feet. Don't be afraid now. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You have not yet given your heart to Jesus Christ. Stand to your feet. Because God is ready to bless you and to take care of you. The folks behind you, beside you, before you, they are, look at them. Look around. Look at them. They are praying for you. Because the devil is trying to stop you from making that decision. And the folks beside you, behind you, they are lifting you up before God. And they're asking God to give you the strength. And their prayers have already been answered because you have stood up. Hallelujah! Amen. You have stood up. Thank you have stood up. Their prayers have already been answered. So I want you to take this step a bit further. Join me, Pastor. Elders, elders, join me, please. Join me, please. Elders, Pastor, join me. Elders, join me here. When these folks come up, I want you to hug them and welcome them into the family of God. I want you to hug them and celebrate victory in Jesus. Come out of your seat and come with me. Step out of your seat. Step out of your seat, my friend. Step out of your seat. Step out of your seat and join the elders and the pastor. Let them congratulate you for the big decision that you have just made. Congratulate. Celebrate with them. Celebrate with them, church. Celebrate, folks. Folks, you have seen... Can somebody help my sister here with, with, with a camera possible? Folks, you should be praying now. You should be praying still. You should be praying still, folks. You should be praying still. You, I, I just want to report to you as you're praying that God has answered your prayer. You want to say amen? God has answered your prayer. God has answered your prayer. These folks have stepped out of their seat bravely because you have lifted them up before the throne of God. God has answered your prayer. God has blessed them and God has given them the courage to step out. They have been congratulated now. And this pastor, bow with them and pray with them individually. Individually too, just pray with them where they are right now. Just put your hands around them and pray with them right now. Because the church is praying. Keep praying, church. Keep praying. Because like we said, when the church pray, God move. Amen? When the church pray, God act. When the church pray, God move amazingly. And we have seen the moving of the Holy Ghost. And we can't take any praise. We can only give the praise to God. Amen? Amen. We can only give all praise to God. Church, God has heard your prayer. He has answered your prayer. He has blessed the folks who have been sitting beside you, behind you, before you. Church, celebrate. Prayer, prayer of thanksgiving. Prayer, prayer of thanksgiving, church. Prayer, prayer of thanksgiving. Thank God that you have answered your prayer. Thank God that he has given victory to these folks. They have been prayed for right now. They have been prayed for victory in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Victory in Jesus Christ. Victory in Jesus Christ. Victory in Jesus Christ. We have been shackled by an every burden, but God has removed the shackle. Amen, somebody. God has removed the shackle and he has given victory to his children. They have walked out of their seat and they have walked out of the kingdom of darkness and they are standing in the kingdom of light today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. They have walked out 
They've walked out. Now they've walked out of Satan, and he's going to be mad with them. He's going to be mad at them. So church, I want you to pray a prayer of protection for them now. Pray a prayer of protection for them, that God will protect them now. That God will build a fence around them now. That God will strengthen their faith now. That God will give them the victory as they go from day to day. Pray a prayer of protection for them right now, church. You're asking God to build a fence around them. Build a fence around these dear folks, Lord. You're praying for them now. These folks are praying for you now. These folks are praying for you. They're asking God to protect you now. They're asking God to bless you. Pray a prayer of protection for them now. Pray a prayer of protection. They have been protected now. They have been protected by God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Then we're going to pray a prayer of thanksgiving now. We're going to pray a prayer of thanksgiving now that they have responded to the call of God and that God will keep them and save them in his kingdom now. So we are thanking God that they will go all the way with Jesus now. We are thanking God that they are going to go all the way with Jesus. They're not going to look back from whence they came now, but they're saying, I want to be saved in God's kingdom. I want to enjoy the best that is yet to come. That's what they're saying because they've walked out of their seat. And so I want you to pray that God will keep them on the road as they walk towards heaven. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord for victory today. Thank God for his blessing. Thank God for his blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folks, I want you to stand with me now. And I'm going to pray for you and thank God for your faithfulness. Thank God for your prayers. I want you to stand with me as we pray. Stand with me. And I love it when folks in unity hold hands to eat, hold on to each other. So hold on to the person beside you. Hold on to the person beside you. I love it when folks hold on in unity, worship in unity. Hold on to the person beside you. Hold on to somebody. Hold on to you, my brother. Everybody should be holding on to somebody. Nobody should be on their own. Nobody should be on their own. Nobody. Well, hold on to my sister. That's right. Hold on to my sister. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the working of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the Sabbath and the blessings of the Sabbath. We thank you, Lord, that your children still believe in the power of prayer. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that is still moving amazingly among your children. Father, we thank you for miracle today. Hallelujah. Father God, you have heard the prayers of your children because they have requested your blessing and the strength and the courage for these folks. And Father, you have immediately, instantaneously answered their prayers. You are so amazing. You are so amazing, God. You answered their prayers because the folks stood up They've been prayed for. You have given them the courage. The folks step out of the sea. They have been prayed for. Lord, you are amazing. You, are, you, you, you amaze me all the time. And Lord, thank you that these folks that have come out of their seat, they have said, I want to enjoy the best that is to come. Yes. Father, seal them in the book of life. We pray for those, Lord, who have already given their hearts to you. They've been they're still in the pews and they have been praying sincerely. Father God, I pray that you'll keep them. Yeah. Keep them in the hollowed palm yeah. of your hand. Yeah. Hold them, Lord, because the devil is going to try to remove them yeah. and he's going to try to distract them. He's going to try to uproot them. Yeah. But you, Lord, you're strong. Yeah. You're amazing. You're powerful. You're mighty. Yeah. And you're able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceeding ecstatic joy. We celebrate you, Lord. We celebrate you today that you'll keep them. For these folks who are walking off their seat, dear God, I pray that you will hear the prayers once again and build a fence around them. That you'll give them the courage of their conviction not to look back from whence they came, but to keep their eyes on Jesus. Because he that begun a good work in them will see it to its completion. Father God, I put before you the pastor and the leaders who are here. They have been praying for these folks. They have stood by them as encouragement and sustenance to them, dear God. I pray even now that you bless the leaders. Lord. Bless them with the spirit of unity, the spirit of evangelism, that they will always seek to save those who are lost. Amen. Bless them, dear God, with the blessing that they need in their lives and the places that they need it most. Bless them. They continue to lead for you, they will follow your leading. Amen. Father, thank you today that you have been with us. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that have worked among us. Thank you for blessing.
blessing us. Thank you for this harvest of wonderful soul. Lead them, Lord, not only to the altar, but through the water grave of baptism yes. and into your kingdom yes. forever and ever. Yes. Let God's people say in celebration. Amen. Amen. Amen.